<sighs> Hello, I'm Jerry the Plater. Welcome to Plating the NRA Way. We're going to be working on a copper electroform piece today. This is something that we electroformed, copper electroformed here in the lab. Started with an aluminum mandrel, plated up a few tenths of an inch of copper around the aluminum mandrel. It then goes to the machine shop where they cut off the ends. They machine the two brass flanges that are soldered on to either end of the electroform. And then it comes back to us for the final finishing work. I want to give you a close-up look of the interior of this part. We'll see how this comes out on camera. But you can see the aluminum mandrel that we started with initially. Okay, that aluminum mandrel then is plated up with a large uh, quantity of copper to actually produce the piece. Then the, the mandrel is machined out, drilled out at the machine shop so that we don't have as much aluminum material to chemically etch out of the part, which is the final step of producing an electroform. So we're going to take this piece over to our, our gold plating area. And we're going to plate it just like we would any copper or brass piece that's going to get gold plating. Start out in the SPD greaser. This is a, uh, a hot dip. It's really just a, a washing soda solution, an alkali cleaner. But the product we buy is called SP Degreaser. That comes from the Caswell Plating Supply Company. So we just soak it in here for 10, 15, 20 seconds. It's not a critical step. Partly what we're doing here, too, is heating the piece up to the temperature of this bath. Um, this is heated to probably 80 degrees C right now which of course helps the cleaning action. And we go from here to an alkali cleaner in our ultrasonics. Switch the ultrasonics on just briefly. Coming out of that alkali cleaner, back into the SP degreaser. Again, to do a little, little degreasing, a little cleaning, but also to heat the part up again since uh, almost all cleaning chemistries are more effective when they're run at a warm temperature. Now this is an alkali cleaner right here. Uh, when we come out of any alkali chemistry, we want to do a water rinse if we're going to be going into an acidic chemistry of any sort. So coming out of an alkali cleaner, we're doing a quick water rinse. And then we're going into a acidic cleaner. This is a mixture of butyl cellulosal acetic acid and a, a detergent called a polytergent, uh, something that we mix up ourselves here in the lab. It's a strong solvent. Again, it's removing fingerprints, oils, greases from the part, and also cutting oxides off of the part, any tarnish that might be on there. You'll sometimes see a tarnished part will look noticeably brighter when it comes out of this solution. Give it ultrasonics just for a moment. And coming out of there, we're going to go into the water rinse. Cleaner, which is Actane 73. This is a commercial plating preparation, uh, generally called an activator in plating terminology. Really, it's just a strong, fairly strong acid that again removes oxides, any tarnish that might still be on the piece, getting it ready for the gold plating. Now, we've already measured the surface area, calculated the surface area of this part at about 12 square inches. Uh, we typically plate gold at about 20 milliamps per square inch. So we're going to set our plating supply to about uh, 240, 250 milliamps of plating current. Set for 240, 250 milliamps.
checking that our agitators are working properly. Got our uh, distilled water rinsing ready. It's turned on. on the park after the actane. <coughs> and again, filled water rinsing on every part before it goes into the plating tanks. It costs about $10,000 to replace one of these gold plating baths. So we really like to do a lot of rinsing, distilled water rinsing immediately before going into the bath. That's one of the secrets of maintaining uh, bath longevity. And we're in the solution. Double checking our current. See we're at uh, 0.25 amps right now. 250 milliamps. I like to do a strong manual agitation when we first go into the bath. Your adhesion between the plated gold and your base metal is really being established in the first millisecond to the first few seconds that you're in the bath. So manual agitation helps replenish the solution right at the surface so you get a strong bond between the plated gold and your base metal. And we turn on the agitator system. We can adjust the frequency of that so that we get a nice pendulum swing, good agitation down in the bath, which is what I'm seeing right now. And then we'd like to have a fairly heavy layer of gold on this part before we go into the, the final etching of the aluminum mandrel. So we'll let this sit in the tank for maybe 15, 20 minutes now. And we're depositing this nominal current of 20 milliamps per square inch. We're depositing about 50 micro inches, 50 millionths of an inch of gold every five to seven minutes onto the part. And I think I'll grab the other camera over here and bring it in closer see if we can get a shot of the piece down in the plating tank. Not see if we can clearly see that gold is being plated onto the part, uh, but it is. You know, we're in a gold plating bath. We've got a quarter amp of current flowing, uh, so we're definitely depositing gold on this guy. We do have an issue that neither of our gold chemistries chemistries right now is really good at plating over solder. Dissimilar metals are always a problem because you're creating a, a galvanic cell where the dissimilar metals come together. And there's just a bit of an issue with plating solder on these components. So we often are not able to form a good uh, gold-plated surface over the solder joints. So what we typically end up doing is just taking a, a Dremel tool with a little wire wheel and brushing off the solder joint uh, when the part is finished. Anyhow, that's it for now. We're going to let this guy sit in the tank for a while and put some gold on. Our Panasonic camera is on a quick release mount on the tripod. Not sure if one is better than the other, but we'll take the Panasonic in now. Looks quite dark actually. 
might not have very good low light performance.